Hi, this is Bob. Working on the uh, Heathkit SS9000 here, and I, I was checking these transistors in the uh, pre-driver stage on the final amplifier board called the PA board. And I'm checking this one, this one, and this one. And I thought, well, it'd be a good idea to show uh, what I do when checking those transistors. You don't have to take anything apart. You do have to disconnect the power. First thing, disconnect the power. And uh, which I've already done. You don't need power to use your ohmmeter. My ohmmeter here is a Simpson 260. And I really like the 260. I uh, have always used it. And for some jobs, I prefer an analog meter. And this is one of those jobs. So the first thing we we're going to do here is ground our negative lead. We got the Simpson 260 on R times 1 range and check the calibration. And we want to touch the top of each transistor, which is the collector. And we should read a little over 40 ohms to ground. That tells us that the uh, insulating washer underneath that transistor is in good condition. And you'll notice here I've gone to the second transistor in the lineup and it's reading the same. And I go to the third one, got some shadows in there that I wouldn't normally like to have in there, and it's about the same, about 45 ohms to ground. So that tells me that all of these insulating washers under all of these transistors is doing its job and they're insulated like they should be. Uh, that's important because if one of those shorts out to ground through that insulating mica washer uh, then you've got problems and that could be your the trouble that you're looking for. Okay then you need to locate your collector base on these and emitter. And you will notice here that uh, I got my test probe here I'm using to point around the collectors of course are the case on top the base on this one you see that little green diode right there that you can see the end of it sticking out well that little green diode the part that's sticking out towards the transistor right there that's the base for this one and the emitter is on that resistor there. So what does that mean? Well we can put our probes on here, we can put our positive probe on this right here and our negative probe on the case here which is a collector and we should read a low resistance about 10 to 15 ohms. Then we turn the probes around and we should read a high resistance. We put the black one on the diode here on this end and the red one on here and we should read like 500 ohms. That shows that that junction of the transistor, the emitter to collector junction, or excuse me, base to collector junction, I get mixed up. You know, 75 years old, uh, you start having trouble with things like that. So that shows that that is working properly. So then we go from the base to emitter, which is at the end of this little resistor, which is 82 ohms quarter watt. So we go from there, we put the red one on the base, the black one over here on this end of that resistor, which is the emitter of this transistor, and we should read, again, a rather low resistance, maybe 15, 17 ohms, 10 ohms, right in that range, somewhere from 10 to 17, let's say. And then we turn the probes around, put the black one on the base and the red one over here, and we should again read a real high resistance, uh, 500 ohms, 400 ohms, something like that. But that shows us that the two junctions of this transistor are working like they should. And effective, effectively, we've done a very simple go, no-go test for that transistor without taking a thing off the board or taking anything apart. You can also do the same test with these guys right here. Now, in this case, both of the bases are connected to the same end of that 82 ohm resistor right there. So that's your base connections that you want to use. And then your emitter connections are these ends of these 27 ohm resistors down here. This end right here next to that little yellow capacitor. 
You notice the other end is connected to ground, so that isn't going to do you any good. But your emitter connection is that end of that 27 ohm resistor. And for this one right here, it's this end of that 27 ohm resistor there. So you want to take your red and your black, and you want to go from this point, which is your emitter, to this point, which is base for both of them. So then you go back and forth, switching your black and red leads, and one way you should read low, the other way you should read high. And uh, you do that with this connection here, and this connection here, switch your leads around, low, high, and you do the same thing with this connection here, and the same point here, low, high. If you get that on those, and you, then you check between this point and the top cap, which is collector, and this point and the top cap of this one, which is collector, and switch your leads, red and black, back and forth, and you should read low high. Now I've done that with the uh, Simpson 260 meter here, and it's worked really fine. And uh, I have also done that with the RCA uh, volt ohm street meter here, uh, another one I've had around here for ages, and it works just about the same. So uh, those, those analog meters work really nice for this kind of a test. And like I say, I prefer them over a digital because a digital is always integrating uh, between different numbers and things where the analog meter shows you more of an average. And I like that very much. So that's how to check those transistors, guys. And uh, I think you, and that is a technique you can use on basically any unijunction transistor, uh, 2N3904s, uh, uh, or anything like that. Little ones, big ones. And a lot of times you can check those right on top of the chassis. The only time you run into trouble is if there's a transformer or something connected between two of those leads. And if that's the case, then you may have to start taking things apart in order to check that transistor. But in 90% of the cases, you can check them right on the board, just like I showed you here. You can also do the same thing with your RF transistors. Here's the base. Here's the emitter. You put your red lead on the base, your black lead on the emitter, and you should read a low resistance, let's say 10 ohms or so, and then you switch them around, and you should read a higher resistance, like 100 ohms or so. You do that with the base to emitter, and then you do it base to collector. And if you get a high low when you switch those two leads around, then you know this guy is probably okay. Is it just a quick no go, go, no go test, which really saves a lot of trouble. And you can do it on the finals too. How about that? The collector is the one closest to this big transformer here. That's the collector. The base is over here. And the emitters go to the same point, ground on each side, so you can either, either one. So you just put your red lead on here, your black lead on here, then you switch them around, and you should read a higher resistance with the black lead on the base. Same thing between the base and the collector. Read a higher resistance with the black lead on the base. And that's a quick go, no-go test. And when you go to the second transistor here, since they are a matched pair, or supposed to be, you should read the same resistances that you did on this one. Another thing I do is when I'm working on these, I'll transmit for 20 seconds or so uh, with the uh, pushing the tune button uh, at 100 watts out, do about 20 seconds, and then you take your two fingers and you put one on the top, after you stop transmitting, you put one on each top of these final transistors and see if they're running about the same temperature. If they're not, you may have a problem because they should be running both hot. And if they're not, then you've got a problem because one of them is not conducting like it should. And you can also check this for the proper, see if it gets really hot to transmit 10, 20 seconds, something like that. And so just so you can determine the difference in temperature, if there is one. And these two. And remember the last video I made, if this guy is, is running really hot, then you may want to snap one of those little round heat sinks onto him to give them a little bit of heat sink. And these two here, and another thing I didn't mention before is that uh, when you change one of these transistors, or both of these transistors, then uh, you want to solder the leads on the other side of the circuit board. That means you've got to take this all apart to change these transistors. But my point is that when you're done 
you solder those three leads on the other side after you put that insulating washer back on and the heat sink compound and then you press down on the transistor and reheat those connections that you just soldered on the other side of the board so that that transistor is firmly depressed onto that heat sink washer so that you get good heat sinking to this right here. Same thing with this one right here. And remember what I mentioned before too is uh, if you do replace this guy here be sure you scrape the green paint off underneath because that's an insulator and that hampers the heat sinking of that transistor. So it's good to get that off. And this one here I did that too and man it's running really cool now. Just barely getting warm while I'm transmitting uh, where before it got really hot. So if it gets really hot, like I say, you can snap one of those little round heat sinks on or you can take the board out, scrape the paint off under there and put that back together again and you'll find that it works really good. That's it guys, just wanted to show you how to check those transistors. This is Bob, 73's and good DX.